I'm using an overheated three block Japanese amp called a TAC, made about 1963, because it's small and I didn't bring the heated Roland and the big subboard uh, big amp. Um, I brought the JP4 because I really like it. Uh, George also has one. He's having some problems with the, with the tuning on his. Uh, this one used to belong to a husband and wife duo who taught electronics at a community college. Uh, she had lung problems. She died after a double lung transplant uh, I canceled, uh, uh, failed. And they were called the Rhythm Toads. So this was her JP4. And because they did electronics, uh, they never left anything alone. So we made a sandwich out of chips and wired them all together. So this JP4 has four, four sets of banks of presets. And uh, it, that makes it a little bit unusual. Um, I was so impressed when it first came out. This was supposed to be, that's supposed to be Tangerine Dream, Roland's sound designers. He's never, he's never been that. Um, but I found it really kind of interesting as a machine, and I've, I, still, I find I still use it. It clocks to 808s and 909s. Uh, it, uh, it's a lot of fun uh, live, and it's actually quite an insane sounding machine. So if you like glitch things, you, it, it's not what you expect the role to be. it in sort of unorthodox ways for a Roland product kind of thing. And there's this old portable industrial synthy band called Automatic Shock that I was in. And we would use that live, and I'm still using it. It was in the studio last Sunday on, on some stuff. So uh, if you've never played a JP4, I mean, I remember when I went to buy it, I looked at it, and I went, inverted envelopes? Ooh. And it's got these little things that... Uh, uh, are, are a lot of fun. The arpeggiator, the external clock sync, and uh, uh, there's a thing named Esther too. It was also, I believe, the first digital memory synth. It was the first one I ever saw that you could actually save a patch. Uh, and there are four individual circuits in there, all analog and so forth. There's MIDI kits and CV ins and out kits, and various people are doing things like that. Uh, if you come across one and have problems, let me know. I've got the service manuals and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's what I brought out of nostalgia. Now, I'm supposed to do this, but whatever. Let's see if any of this other stuff works. Lately, this year, what I've been doing a lot, actually, is uh, solo wise, is going out and playing noise events. And I do that under a pseudonym. Uh, pretty dark, it's house parties, it's art galleries, and things like that. Um, and I've been interested in this, I haven't played it out yet, but you might have seen uh, Critter and uh, Guitari's website. So this is his little video synth. It's an analog video synth. Audio in from an effects synth out to your TV or your projector, and most uh, large clubs have projectors. Uh, and then controls, and your test pattern is then just going to go absolutely nuts based on the kind of audio that you're feeding in. And so I'm looking at some way to be a little less boring standing there going, mm -hmm, you know, and stuff like that. And it's really nice that I don't have to think about it. It's responding to the frequency ranges that I'm feeding into it. And uh, the only downside is you end up lugging a TV around, which shouldn't be that hard since you find them sitting on the curb all over your neighborhoods today <laughs> and things like that. Um, over the winter, I was building a lot of uh, Eric Archer, uh, the Austin crowd, Eric Archer, uh, um, Fora Mass Pedals, uh, uh, Casper Electronics, uh, Nathan Audio, uh, who am I forgetting? I'm forgetting some. Eric, Eric, Fora Mass, um, and Nathan Audio. They're all making these little uh, $55 kits which uh, talk to each other using infrared TV circuits, and so they take timing signals but I'm finding them really difficult to sort of line up. Uh, it has to be very precise, and I'm real sloppy about 
how far down in the circuit board I put the uh, infrared transmitter. And if it's off by a little bit, I have problems. Uh, individually, they're all kind of neat. They do quite a lot. And uh, uh, they're all powered. As soon as you plug them in, they power up. So if you're interested in those, I've got the, the Mark 1 to 3. Nathan makes a uh, uh, MIDI to infrared uh, uh, clock machine. So that's what this one is. Or you can go the other way, and you can go from infrared to MIDI. And again, they're, they're about $50 units. And he's making a, re a really interesting uh, Space Baby delay pedal, uh, which does a lot more than you think. You push down, and it locks in and changes the parameter. Rotate to the next thing, and lock down, and it changes just that parameter. And it's quite a lot of fun. Um, I'm a big fan of Eric Archer's gear. Uh, this is one of his light synthesizers. Um, this is actually reading light off there. thing I've been building oh yeah this is a 